Okay, so a few months ago I took part in Andy Mecca's Community Make Challenge. Uh, a lot of people, really talented people, did a lot of really good stuff, so definitely go and uh, check Andy Mecca's channel. So I wanted to make a sort of a, a video journal, you know, just to show people maybe <laughs> if someone wants to learn from my mistakes. So well, here it is. I imagine my my Mac like an industrial Mac, so uh, abandoned. I just took some pictures here, maybe in its final resting place. And you know, the hose. This hose. It's just a. Uh, like a cord, like a shoelace, an old shoelace. Uh, the drill thing, it's um, a chapstick, not not exactly this brand, but this kind of chap chapstick stick. I just took it apart and salvaged the piece. Uh, this whole thing right here and this little metal thing it came from taking apart uh, a lighter you can get a, a lot of good stuff from lighters this tubing right here and the pistons and the feet it came from um, round spruce Like these ones. The springs. Oh, it's just copper wire. And this tubing, it's also copper wire but with a plastic uh, casing. You know, this comes from uh, telephone wire. Which is really nice because you can bend it and it keeps its shape. This little hatch came from a seal, a plastic seal from a, a sweet and sour sauce. It came like this, and when I took it out, I said, Well, you can use it as a hatch or something. These tubes they came from old Q-tip uh, shafts. Nowadays you have the, the paper ones, but maybe you can use a tube from a ballpoint pen. The railing it came from an old speaker, an audio speaker, just took it apart. And what I used to make these things and the these vents, the material is a sort of aluminum thing like this that comes in some wine bottles it wraps around not really the the cork but the the glass the this little piece it comes from a, a electrolytic capacitor which you can use do a lot of stuff like the backpack on this this mutant I've been working on. So yeah, capacitors are really versatile.
Yeah, and... This piece came from an... Uh, deodorant, a deodorant can. And these tubings came from guitar strings. But the important thing is that they're nylon strings. Which means you can just cut them with scissors, like uh, metal strings. Now I just started with some plastic art, made a basic shape. Used a, a round cutter to make a, a curved a curved shape. Give it a little sanding. Take out the rough edges. Some cleaning with a knife. Did some dry fitting and I used some paper, just some bond paper to try to work out the shape for the, the walls. Working with paper is easier because you can just easily cut it, bend it, dry fit it. And transfer, transfer the shape to uh, to um, the plastic art. Just freehand cutting the, the curves. Not really cutting, but just. Um, Marking them with the knife. Now, when I bent this, uh, it had a, a little spring to it, so I figured I'd try a technique. is useful for bending stiff um, stiff um, plastic or you just make shallow grooves into the material By the way, this kind of blade, I think it's called a cut's claw. At least in Spanish. 
you can see the little grooves. And how you can just bend it easier. Here I'm just pre-bending it a little. I wanted to try one without grooves and one with grooves. See what works better. So this one, this is a little a smaller piece, which I'm just trying to bend a little to help with the, the gluing. Now, instead of gluing with Tamiya glue, I wanted to try to to weld it by using friction welding or um, rotary welding. So I just cut a little piece of sprue and put it in the, in the rotary tool. And just try to apply an even pressure. Now I think it was a mistake to do it with my finger, just my finger. I should have used a piece of wood or something. You can see in this part that I'm bending the, the plastic earth. It's not straight, so in the end with the heat it's gonna it's going to remain bent. bent. Which in the end kind of messed up that part of the, the walls. But the welding is really... it works fairly good. Now this one's the one without grooves. Now in here you can see that I, I kind of messed up and the wall is really not flush and in the end it kind of came apart a little just right there but you can just glue it back with cement now maybe it is because the, the plastic art is a little a little uh, thin maybe that is because before this I, I had tried it with thicker stock just you can see here and it's really really strong so I don't know what happened really. No, I'm just gluing. Oh no, that's. I'm just dry fitting with some tape, marking the top.
dry fading. And cut into the mesh. Now, if you use, if I had used a thinner mesh, I could have cut it with regular scissors. But this was really, this was really thick, so I had to use metal scissors. You know, scissors for cutting metal. And I wanted to try two two ways of bending it. This is this is one using a a, a round shape to try to bend it and keep the, the roundness. In the end it didn't work as well as I had hoped. It was too much of a hassle. And for the other one, I just used some round nose pliers. But I think I could have used just some, some regular uh, long nose pliers. Now I think this way was a lot quicker and easier. Less of a hassle. Just gluing the thing together. Cutting some strips to put some detailing on the on the floor. Cleaning everything up with some alcohol. Marking the, the mesh. This is just um, contact cement. And this is some tire paint, you know, to paint tires, car tires black. But it was dirt chip. And I think it's really good for stuff like this, you know, painting the, the inside black. So when you close it up, you, you just see black inside. Now working on the feet, the legs. Dry fitting. I wanted to add some detail, you know, like, I don't know, just some, some detailing on the leg. Checking the articulation to try to find a final pose in the end and I wasn't convinced with the thickness of the wire I was using so I, I tried to, to cut a hole but just didn't fit so what I did in the end was use the, the same wire to cut the hole the same wire to drill the hole I mean you have a wire like this, a uh, metal wire, and you cut it, 
you have a cutting edge which if you put in a, in a you use as a drill bit you can just drill the hole exactly the the size of your wire and if you have a, a pilot hole drilled already it's really really fast It goes right, right in, real snugly. But here in the end, I I pried it apart because it has a uh, this middle piece that kept it from going all the way. So I just cut it with some pliers. And I'm just checking again, dry fitting, checking the articulation, trying to find a, a pose, a nice pose. Doing these bends, it's really easy. You can use, as I used, you can use the, the material that comes in wine bottles kind of a, a really soft aluminum or you can use the, the casing the, the some medicines some some products have this uh, this kind of thick aluminum For making the vent, you just drill some parallel lines like this. And then you cut a sort of a trapeze shape. You just cut angles on both sides of the line. And then you just pry it apart, trying to keep a straight edge on the base of the, the trapeze.
and just work patiently. Put some music on and just enjoy the work. Doing this kind of work in front of the camera is really, really difficult. go. When you put it against a flat surface, it really stands out. It's really nice. And I wanted to make some detailing, you know, like some rivets. Just used a, an old ballpoint pen. Then I just used the edge of a knife to slightly score some lines to make it look like a, a screw. Just fit in the tubes. Try fitting everything, cutting. Marking the spot to drill the hole. Drilling some pilot holes with my good 
drill bit, which I only use for plastic. Making it bigger. It doesn't fit. Making it bigger still. It doesn't fit again. Trying to be clever and taper it. Failing yet again. Then I said screw it, I'm just gonna use a big drill and... Success. Now to make the springs and the, the suspension, I just used uh, some copper wire around the around surface. It makes really nice springs. And working on the pistons for the feet. Just cutting it to size. So that it fits snugly. And for the feet I tried different cross shapes. Now I figured I had to raise the the, the base of the of the feet to fit the, the pistons. So I just cut some really really small round shapes which stacked together would give a nice a nice surface to drill holes into. So that the feet were real, really, really strong. I 
Now here I'm just cutting some rivets, you know, to detail the, the walker. This tool really is for making holes, but you can use it to make really nice and small rivets. And after you cut a whole lot of them, you just put them in a container and you can use them as you wish. And since they're cut from plastic earth, you can just glue them with some Tamiya glue. and a lot of patience. And here I'm drilling the holes in the feet, so when I glue the pistons, the feet will be really, really strong. Now at the beginning I did the feet with the long, the long part to the front. But I thought that it looked like a, um, a clown shoe, so in the end I just turned it around and it looked a whole lot better. Maybe in the future I'm gonna make a clown, a clown walker with feet just like this. And for the detailing, this detailing, I just cut some little sh strips, did the detailing with a ballpoint pen, bent the little pieces. And since this part of the, the walls came out a little crooked. I figured, well, I can just show that it was damaged and repaired. And here are some images of the finished piece. You can see all the bits and a whole lot of bits that I didn't cover in the video. This is just primer with some Vallejo black primer. And the final painted version, which I may repaint or re-detail in the future. You can see the feet are backwards, which I think look a lot better.
and in the end just a little still image with some miniatures to show size and thank you for watching